Welcome to module 8, lecture number 27. In this uh, new module, we are going to discuss about competitive analysis and design brief. See, until now we have discussed about, uh, from start we discussed about usability and we discussed about the historical foundations of usability. We have discussed in detail about the design process and um, various techniques and tools and methods for requirement, uh, data gathering methods, uh, specifically user study. We also talked about uh, various uh, user study techniques that are qualitative and quantitative in nature, right. We discussed about various cognitive issues. So, in the design process, once this user study is carried out, <coughs> what you get as an insight from your user study are the names of various competitors that your customers are using. So, they might tell you that I am, I am using this product, I am using that product and from these insights you know that these are your competitors, right. So, post user study or as you are doing user study, you can start doing a competitive analysis. Now, why we are doing competitive analysis? We are doing competitive analysis in order to assess the competition that exists in the market across the products that are lined up to address uh, similar kind of requirements or requirements which we want to focus on. Okay. So, we must assess them and we must assess them in order to understand how difficult would be for us to position a product that would address these specific requirements that we have identified. And it is because of this situation or because of this kind of uh, uh, issue that we intend to design a product that we want to launch it in the market and our objective is that this product must succeed the competition. It must stand out while competing with the products that already exist and these product may be directly competitors, may be the direct competitors or can be indirect competitors. So, in order to do that, we must conduct competitive analysis. So, welcome to this new model. So, we will discuss about these techniques, uh, various frameworks, various analysis techniques that uh, generally designers use to identify their competitors as well as to use some matrices in order to analyze their performance, analyze their positioning in the market. And once you have the insights from user study, you have insight from your market study, often market study is a is, is the terminology that is being used by designers, but the essence is to conduct a competitive analysis. And we get the insights from this both, then we know the specific brief on which our conceptualization stage will proceed. That means, we know the exact state where we are going to come up with a design intervention and we generally term as design brief. Design brief is absolute necessary for us, because in order to ensure that all our group members are on the same plane, we all know that this is the situation for which we are designing, this is the specific requirement for which we are designing, we must have a statement that, that is being called as design brief. And this statement will guide our process of innovation, innovating a design intervention, right. So, we will discuss in this module about all these techniques in detail. Let us begin. See, one of the critical steps when developing a new product is finding out where you stand with the competition. Competitive analysis is a necessary part of the design process to help businesses 
gain valuable insight into the market, identify the strengths and weaknesses of their products and develop effective product strategies to create winning results. If you see here what we have discussed, you would realize that the focus is on this competition. That means, to understand the market forces and this tells a lot about the demand, this tells a lot about the practices This tells a lot about the benchmarks by whom? By our competitors. So, in short, the focus is on identifying the market forces, because if we fail to define these market forces correctly, then probably the product that we are going to design would also fail. Let me give you a story of the Britannica Encyclopedia. I often do give an example of uh, this uh, Britannica Encyclopedia. I am not sure whether do if you remember when we were kids in book fairs or even uh, in our homes. Uh, sellers from these organizations used to come with big, big books and they used to sell these books to uh, households, specifically where you have kids and these were wonderful books. It focuses on a particular topic and it is an encyclopedia. You can understand everything about that particular topic would be there as a binded book material and you were supposed to buy that from that person. So, this organization failed to correctly identify that when internet age came, the internet itself would be its competitor. They failed to understand this and one of the reasons why you do not see these organizations selling the books again and their entire product lined up died is because the advent of internet gave rise to numerical, numeral content generators and the most famous of them is the Wikipedia. You do not need to buy, you have an internet, you have it in your mobile, you can access the pages and understand about a product, about a theme, about a content, about anything. Now, that is what we need to remember. You are designing a product that should last and the objective for the, your stakeholder to design this product is to get return on investment. He has committed an investment by creating a team, ensuring you resources so that you can come up with an intervention with the product that would be sold in the market or somehow it would earn revenue from the market. You might have also studied about break even, you know, the point where the amount of money that was invested is being recovered from the product and then it goes towards a phase where you start earning revenue based on post whatever you have invested. Now, if that is the motive, then you must ensure that your product is successful to a certain extent, so that return on investment is guaranteed. It is a market driven economy and therefore, it is of paramount Im importance to your stakeholder that the market forces need to be understood by the design team. The design team must understand what works, 
what the market has given to your users, to your actual users, what kind of features they have been fed with, what kind of practices they have been exposed with. Because without knowing these customs, without knowing these practices that are already prevailing, if you design something which is way below this, your product is going to fail. Even if you are, you have rightly identified the requirement. So, it is therefore important for the design team to understand the market forces correctly, to understand the demand, to understand the practices, the strategies, right? And to understand the benchmarks. And you can do all this thing by analyzing the competitor, their products that are being there in the market. Now, a competitive analysis can help you learn the ins and outs of how your competition works and it helps you to identify potential opportunities. See, it not only helps you to understand the practices or the trends that are being currently going in the market or the features to which your customers have been exposed to, it also allows you to understand the opportunities, gaps yet to be fulfilled. Frustrations. And these are the opportunities where you can outperform your competitors, right? You can outperform them. It also enables you to stay atop of industry trends and ensure that your product is consistently meeting and exceeding the industry standards. Some of the benefits of conducting a competitive analysis are that it helps you identify your product's unique value proposition. See, the unique value that your product will bring into the life of your customer, your user should find the product as a utility product there should be a meaningful meaning associated with the product that you are designing. There should be a value and value can only come when the product is considered as a utility product by your actual users. And what makes your product different from the competitors? This the differentiator is very important, is it not? Do not you consider that something has to be there that speaks out or stands out when your product is displayed, your product is compared along with your competitors. There should be something that stands out and this is that feature which will attract your, you the market share. This will attract loyal customers for your product which can perform future marketing efforts. So, see everything is inter interlinked, right from when you see new designs, new cars, new products, life, lifestyle products, accessories, even software products are coming. There is always this idea that something that stands out is being highlighted in the marketing aspect of the, when the product is introduced. Assess where your product or design stands in the market, the standing of the product in the market. This enables you to identify what your competitor is doing right. This is a good phase where you analyze the competitors and understand what they are doing right. This information is critical for staying relevant and ensuring both your product and your marketing campaigns are outperforming industry standards. 
So, it helps you in defining gaps in the market, it helps you in identifying the advantages and disadvantages of your products, it tells you where your competitors are falling short, right? which helps you identify areas or opportunity areas, because you have also seen that the um, when we were discussing about the journey maps, you had the focused section on identifying the opportunity areas, your competitive analysis also helps you to identify that and test out new unique marketing strategies that have not taken advantage of. It helps you to learn through customer reviews what is missing in competitors product and consider how you might add features to your own product to meet those needs. Consider the Amazon. In Amazon you have so many products listed, get into any product that is highly rated or poorly rated and you will see the feedback of the customers. If you even read those feedbacks, you will understand the frustrations of the customers using that product. You would be able to understand what are the needs, the requirements that your customers intend to have from those kind of products and it provides you with a benchmark you know against which you can measure your own growth growth of the product. It helps you to have evidence to back up your design changes, because once you have these rationals that uh, taking a particular design feature is, is not taken well or considered well by your customers, then that can act as a cue for subsequent innovation in that design feature. It helps you solve usability issues. You can rightly understand the usability issues from its analysis and also from the feedback of your users. And finally, it enables you to develop your go to market strategy. See? So, conducting a competitive analysis is so, so, so important for our design process, for informing the design process about the innovation that is going to take place during the conceptualization stage. It also helps us to redefine our design brief. We might have a design brief from a or a requirement or an opportunity area from a user study, but then once we conduct the market study, we know okay, all these things are already being addressed and people are happy with this. Let me see what people are not happy or what is yet to be addressed and then you redefine your design brief or opportunity area and put it right for the innovation to take place. These are some of the benefits of conducting competitive analysis. The next question that we would like to discuss is, when should you do a competitive analysis? See performing a competitive analysis should be one of the earliest research steps in the user experience design process or the iterative design process that we have discussed earlier. Competitive analysis should begin before working on a new design and it should continue for the project's duration, since new competition may emerge and market conditions will continue to change throughout the design process. This is something which has to be, needs to be remembered and kept in mind when you are into the design process. Change is what is constant in this world. Whether if you remember our discussion on human behavior, that human behavior is ever changing, ever changing. We have now understood that your market, which is based on this is also ever changing and it will continue to change and therefore, it is important that you keep this in mind and continue studying your market 
throughout your design process. Now, how to conduct a comparative analysis? So, to get started on your comparative analysis, first define your goals. What are your goals? Access the competition and start comparing products with these steps. And the steps are, if you can see in this slide, first outline your goals and define your product. You can ask yourself, why are you doing this competitive analysis and what do you hope to achieve? What are your intentions? What do you understand to know? What are the focus that you are, that is driving your intention to conduct this analysis? Be specific in your goal and design focus to keep your analysis on track. Second, compile a list of your direct and indirect competition. This is very important. Somebody can directly affect you and there are some products which can be indirect competition to you. We will discuss that uh, later. You can create a table with 5 to 10 direct and indirect competitors. Categorize them based on priority in this order. Like you compile a list of direct and indirect competition and then you compile the list in terms of who are the direct competitors, who are indirect competitors. Now, by direct competition, we mean the, those companies that offer the same products and services at a similar price points to satisfy customer needs. By indirect competition, we mean these companies that offer different products or services in the same market that can potentially satisfy the same need. Okay. One focusing on the same product, the other different products, but satisfying the same need. Third, you can create a comparison chart of the competitor's product features. You can include a list of features and other user experience elements that would be most useful to consumers using your product. And these features should include user interface, which is very, very important for you because we are here designing software products, right? Images, filters, sorting, load time, responsiveness. These are some of the things, but this list can be altered. You can, you can alter these according to your, your own requirements. See, many a time what you see here is a compilation of, many, of this chart. You can see on the top, you would see the various products like menu log, food taxi, Uber Eats, Deliver Easy, Food Ninja like this and then you have <coughs> the features which that are listed in order to compare them like design, images, filters, sorting, uh, search results, you know and some more features can be added. Development also you can look into place what kind of uh, languages they have used, loading time and the responsiveness of the product. So now, apart from this, some of the features which I do um, encourage my students to use is the concept of unique selling proposition. That means, each product has a unique selling proposition. Whenever you go to Google, whenever you go to um, say any food delivery online products, mobile applications, there is a main feature there is a main activity which they cater to. Apart from that, there are multiple activities. And these unique selling proposition can be classified as something which, which is focusing on the primary activities of the products. You can identify that across your competitors. You can also identify their secondary, secondary activities. Right? You can also identify the target user group based on the features that they have. You can identify the user elements, user interface elements, 
what kind of color palette they have used, right? What kind of uh, grid system they have used? What kind of UI elements they have used, right? And when you stack them across your competitors, you would know the pattern that gets generated across this study, what each of them is focusing into. Fourth, you identify the differences between the products. You can use the comparison chart to identify the differences between your product and the competitors products. For example, here you can say this is something our product, you need not fill it here like this, but you can say competitor 1, competitor 2, competitor 3 and competitor 4 and then you can say what are the strengths, their weaknesses, their pricing, their social media strategy, their onboarding experience. You can also talk about their navigation, you can also talk about their interaction types. Their micro interaction strategies, micro interaction strategies, we will discuss that later in later modules, so on and so forth. And then create a comparative table in order to understand your competitors with, with respect to the features in a vivid and detailed way. Some of the frameworks are extensively used here. And we are going to discuss about these frameworks in detail here. One of the major frameworks that you would see that designers choose to use during competitive analysis is this is conducting a SWOT analysis. Now, what is a SWOT analysis? The SWOT analysis framework helps you evaluate the internal strengths and weaknesses and external factors, the opportunities and threats. So, Strengths and weaknesses are the internal factors and opportunities and threats are the external factors that impact your business or a course of action. It can be an activity or a business. What you see here in the image is a SWOT analysis, strengths internal factors that give you an advantage, weaknesses internal factors that work to your disadvantage. This can be examples like you know brand reputation, access to skilled staff, company culture industry relationships and location. Some of the external factors like opportunities and threats are examples number of alternatives, then demand, then availability of financing, cost of raw supplies, political climate, so on and so forth. You know, this is based on your interpretation. This is one way of doing analysis of your competitors. The second one is the Porter's five forces. Now, Porter's five forces is a framework that examines the competitive market forces in an industry or a segment. It evaluates an industry or market according to five major elements and these elements are new entrants, buyers, suppliers, substitutes and competitive rivalry. What you see here is an image of the five porters, five forces, right? You see intensity of competitive rivalry, that means how many firms compete and how much is the market growing. You can have a detailed analysis on this. Threat of substitutes, how likely are customers to switch to an alternative? That is a very, very important and rare insight that would help you in your design process. Then bargaining power of suppliers, how much power do your suppliers have, if whatever. You can be a software product that relies on data from other applications. So then those becomes your suppliers, so how much power do they have? Because they can directly influence the availability of your product in the market. If they switch, if they tend not to share data, then the product will crash. Bargaining power of buyers, how much power do customers have? Okay. Threat of new entrants, 
So, how easy is it for you for new businesses to set up shop? Right? These are the Porter's five forces that many designers use to analyze their market forces or understand the competitiveness of the market in terms of analyzing the competitive products. Now, when do you use Porter's five forces to analyze or conducting a competitive analysis? This framework is useful when you want to analyze the competitive structure of an industry. Now, looking at the five forces, you can it can provide insights into how attractive it is to enter into a new market. For example, you know. Uh, this is hel helpful if you are considering whether you should expand your product offering to reach new customers like Airtel has uh, entered into new countries, Bajaj has uh, foray into new economies in the African continent. Right? So, before you enter into these new market forces, you, you conduct a Porter's five forces analysis to understand the primary factors around which your market forces are driven. Right. So, competitive analysis using Porter's five forces can also provide insights to help you shape your strategy to the competitive landscape of your industry. For, for instance, if the threat of substitutes is high, you may seek to mitigate that competitive force with a strategy focused on building brand affinity among your customers. So, therefore, if you see in the long run, there may be many substitutes of your product. You must focus on creating a brand building exercise. For example, there have been so many search engines, but the brand Google is so big. You owe an allegiance to the brand. Okay? So, these are the strategies that people use, designers use into a, in order to ensure that you earn loyal customer base. The third framework is called the strategic group analysis. Now, a competitive analysis framework that analyzes organizations in clusters based on the similarity of strategy. That means, strategies which each cluster of organizations follow. You can see it in the image given in this slide. It has been plotted, the competitors have been plotted across share of voice that the market share and the reliance on paid search. So, that means, we are focusing on software products and how the paid search option is focused or generates a lot of traffic or revenue or footfall for your product. Now, by identifying the cluster, your firm falls into for any given strategic dimension, what you can do, you can get is, you get a sense of the impact of the different strategic approaches. You can also see those you are most closely competing with. You can see in the graph here, there is a competitor F and competitor E and these have been clustered based on their share of market, vo market forces or voice and reliance on paid search and these are the clusters based on different strategies that they follow. So, competitor G H share similar strategies <coughs> while competitors A and B share different and competitor C, D, E and probably U where you are thinking your product to be share different strategies. Right. Now, when do you use the strategic group analysis? See, it is useful when you have a hypothesis about the effect of business dimension. That means, you have an assumption. Hypothesis means an assumption about the business dimension. For example, say you, you can create strategic groups according to digital marketing tactics, you know how you are promoting your digital marketing and you analyze the performance of the groups to explore potential causality. That means, what causes what? Does this digital marketing techniques or tactics helps in gathering loyal customer base or more footfall or more traffic? 
how do competitors who rely heavily on paid search so paid search is a digital marketing technique isn't it so paid search campaigns fare when it comes to share of voice which of your competitors fall into the same cluster as your firm when it comes to their pricing and strategy so by exploring these different dimensions what you can do is you can surface key factors for success and evaluate your position relative to others in the industry so the fourth analysis framework is the growth share matrix now the growth share matrix is an analysis framework that classifies the products in your company's portfolio against the competitive landscape of your industry the competitive landscape of the industry so it was developed by the boston consulting group in 1970s and the model gained widespread acceptance for helping companies decide which products to invest in based on competitiveness and market attractiveness you can see the matrix of growth share matrix here in the slide so according to according to the boston consulting group products fall into one of the four quadrants and these are the question mark star cash cow and pet the question marks this one the question marks are high growth but low market share products often new products with high potential fall here now these should be invested in or let go depending on how likely a product is to become a star so the next goal is to these products mature to become star now star products are those products that are likely to achieve high growth and high market share so both are high high growth and high market share your firm should invest heavily in these products cash cows are those products that are low growth but high share products the growth is low but these are high share products high share means market share products these are products that bring in cash and can fund investment in your stars that means this helps funding for stars or even this because this brings in investments pets now pets these are low share low growth that means these are the products considered as failures and your business should reposition these products or stop investing in them now when do we use such a growth share matrix so the traditional use of this matrix formulated by the boston consulting group was is to help large firms determine their product portfolio that means you have a large industry and you have a huge line of products which products to invest in further and which to cut based on expected cash flow that is produced however it holds other uses too and what's that smart insight notes that this model can also be applied to analysis of digital marketing strategies so by plotting channel growth against return on investment that means how much your product is growing against the return on investment that we have discussed of the channel and evaluating similar to how you would evaluate products a marketer can see which channels to invest in or stop using this is an example the next uh, the next one that we are going to discuss is the perceptual mapping now you can see it in the image perceptual mapping is a visual representation of perceptions of your product relative to competitor alternatives okay so 
this means competitor, competitor alternatives. This is perception of your product, the product that you are going to design, your design intervention, right. It is also called positioning mapping because it shows the position of your brand, product or service mapped again along with that of your competitors. The first step is to determine two attributes that you will use on the basis of your comparison. Next, you plot where your product and those of your competitors fall on the spectrum across those two attributes. Okay? Now, what you see in the perceptual mapping is that products are being mapped across high quality, low quality, high price and low price. And these are the perceptions that the products have from the market. So, you can do a user study and you could also understand how your products can be mapped, how your competitors can be mapped. Now, we that means the design team can use this perceptual mapping in order to understand how our users interpret products in terms of these quadrants across high quality, low quality, high price and low price. This helps us to understand what does our user base consider something that is you know emergent. That means, the quality is high, but the price is low, quality is high, but the price is little bit fair, little bit mediumly high, but not ex too much high and something which is high, but price is also high. These are some of the ranges that you should focus on to understand how these competitors are stacked together and how they are addressing or they are being used by your customers. That will also tell about the market and your customer strategy of using and buying these products. Now, when do you use a perceptual mapping? You use perceptual mapping is useful for understanding how your customer perceive your product offering in relation to your competitors. Market researchers use perceptual mapping to show the results of customer input they have collected. As a marketeer, you will find mapping useful when you want to understand how customers really view you and your competitors. This will help you understand whether your existing positioning strategy is registering with your target audience or and it can also provide insight into gaps that you can as a design team target. Now, remember these are some of the things that even marketing people use to analyze the market forces. As a design team, you can really focus on using these techniques to analyze your competitors. Even if say for example, you do not have the product, if you are going for a redesign of your product, then it is well and good. You have the product and now you can do this analysis to understand the perceptual structure of your product in comparison to the competitors from the perspective of your users. If you do not have the product, if you have only a brief or a requirement, then you can map only the competitors and understand and define the requirements more specifically based on analysis of the quality and the price band of the product. These are some of the frameworks and strategies that are being used while designers conduct competitive analysis.